Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. The B.C. Court of Appeal confirms the unconstitutionality of indefinite solitary confinement. If you're in labor, you need to drive to Abbotsford Hospital, but only for the next two weeks. We need new schools, but eye-raising costs of land acquisition means someone has to pay for it. And guess who? Tractor grease. Are we about to see a sequel to Footloose and the Trans Mountain Pipeline route? Reroute? Thanks for watching. We are committed to providing local news and news that impacts our local audience in Chilliwack, including beautiful areas such as Rosedale, Promontory, Garrison Crossing, Fairfield Island, Little Mountain, Chilliwack Mountain, Cultus Lake, and of course, Yarrow. In addition to the most important news of the week, sports and weather, we have as our guest this week, MLA for Chilliwack Kent, Laurie Thronis, in his first appearance on Chill TV. Scott McVetty of Remax NIDA Realty back this week with his real estate report and an in-depth look at Garrison Crossing. Deborah Green in her first Chill TV travel report and Lori Clausen of Clausen Marketing Co. in a look at social media marketing in the Fraser Valley. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. But before we do, it's my great pleasure to welcome Nancy Guitar to the show. Thank you. And now our King's Music top news story. Last Monday, the British Columbia Court of Appeal released its decision affirming the unconstitutionality of the federal government's laws that authorize prolonged, indefinite, solitary confinement in prisons across Canada. Now, the decision has serious implications for the new solitary confinement legislation that was passed into law just last Friday in Ottawa by Parliament. The decision is a rejection of the government's attempt to overturn the January 2018 B.C. Supreme Court decision that found the government is endangering the lives and the health of federally incarcerated prisoners when it locks them away in prolonged indefinite solitary confinement. The case was brought by the B.C. Civil Liberties Association as well as the John Howard Society of Canada. This affects federal and provincial institutions in Chilliwack, Kent, Matsqui and Mission. As Chilliwack's hospital's maternity ward gets set to close for 15 days due to a shortage of available obst obstetricians, BC Liberal MLAs John Martin, Lori Thornis are calling on the Fraser Health Authority to upgrade local maternity facilities. The original closure was set for 15 weeks, effectively the entire summer. Thornis says the $10 million estimated cost of an upgraded maternity ward is relatively minor when compared to recent expenditures in other communities, such as $500 million for St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, $363 million for North Island Hospital in Comox, and $66 million for Lionsgate Hospital in Vancouver. A lot of school news this week, the final week of school for the kids, and the last week for the final meeting of the Chilliwack School Board for the year. School site acquisition costs proved to be sticker shock for the board. The cost to provide new schools to the growing community has been a reality check. And to no one's surprise, land costs are what are driving up the price tag. There is an immediate need to build three new schools, and that could raise the base tax rate for the homeowner under the school site acquisition charges. New information was brought forth to the board, but not in time for an informed discussion. So that was not addressed prior to the end of the school year. The question of protocol for school board question period was also up for debate. The length was pared back and restricted to agenda topics after many years of the public having the opportunity to simply rant and rave. Trustee Darrell Ferguson wanted the status quo to be returned, but that was voted down. In the past, the open concept led to many free-for-alls and discussion was usually bogged down over SOGI 123. The board felt that restricting the topics to the day's agenda was the best way to keep the quorum. And when we return, Trans Mountain Pipeline is clear for takeoff, but are they going to need another runway? Hello, I'm Jack Cardex from Pristine Foods. We're a local micro farm in Chilliwack. My brother and I are supplying locally grown fresh living lettuce to Hofsteads. We grow them from start to finish right here in Chilliwack. 
uh, so there's not very many food miles involved with bringing our product to the market. Hofstede has been very accommodating ever since we first approached them. They've really wanted to work with us and bring the best quality uh, local product to the customer. And the end goal is obviously to supply a fresh, consistent local product that is very competitive um, with California or imported products. Here's some of the local lettuce we got. Do you want to have a try at it? Local is better. Now more school news and that thorny topic of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. The current pipeline and its twinning project crosses through two properties, two school zones in Sardis, Vetter Elementary and Watson Elementary. The board has sent a letter to the regulator, the National Energy Board, stating that they approve the project, they don't approve the route. Moving the pipeline route around the now Nestle project in Hope was cited as an example of TMX being able to work around controversies. This Sunday, June 30th, BC Transit will renew the summer bus service to Cultus Lake. The route departs and returns from Vetter and Promontory to Cultus Lake Elementary School. Summer Sunday service on Route 11, Agassiz Harrison, will also be in effect starting on June 30th. Jeff Bonner started Tractor Grease Studio and Bar with the intention of promoting local music. He's run into an interesting dilemma. Back on March 15, 2015, the Fraser Valley District approved Tractor Grease Cafe to have crowd participation, in essence, dancing in a concert atmosphere. Then last fall, September of 2018, Bonner was told by the Liquor Board it would not be approved because patrons were staying too long and not eating. Bonner was told that to continue having open mics, jams, or dancing, Tractor Grease would have to be a liquor primary or a bar. Subsequent warnings and, fi and fines have put Tractor Grease in a financial bind to the point that Bonner has now set up a GoFundMe page to cover those costs. Monday, July 1st, Canada Day in Chilliwack and Agassiz will be full of events. In Chilliwack, everything will be happening at Townsend Park, including the traditional 10 p.m. fireworks. In Agassiz, Canada Day celebrations will be at Pioneer Park. The family fun starts with a pancake breakfast and continues in the afternoon with a free swim at Ferniecombe Pool. And now we'd like to introduce Laurie Thronis, the MLA for Chilliwack Kent, with an overview of a new bill that he is proposing. Well, hi. I'm working on a project to remediate grow ups. Police have estimated that there are 20,000 marijuana grow operations in BC. And with the legalization of cannabis, there will be many thousands more because anyone can now have up to four plants in their home. This is a real problem for homeowners because most banks will not provide a mortgage for a home that has previously been used as a grow up. Or they might provide a mortgage at a really high interest rate. Homeowners may also have to pay extra for insurance. So when it comes time to sell a home that has previously been used as a grow up, a buyer who can't afford to pay cash might have a really hard time getting a mortgage. And heaven knows the trouble we already have with housing availability in the Fraser Valley. This will just make it worse. Government has a role to play here. So I introduced a private member's bill about it. I proposed a new law. My bill would task an existing government office called the New Homes Registry to develop remediation standards in consultation with industry. Industry would include construction firms and engineers, and banks and real estate agents and consumers, everyone who has an interest in safe and healthy homes. Remediation would address problems like electrical safety and mold and smell and other issues that arise naturally out of grow ups. After remediation work is done at the owner's expense and inspected by a provincially licensed home inspector, the government office created by my bill would issue a certificate confirming that the home has been safely and completely remediated. This would reassure lenders and insurers that they can safely mortgage and insure these homes at prevailing market rates. And this in turn would have a positive effect on the availability of housing as thousands of previously inaccessible homes across BC would be brought onto the market for new homeowners to enjoy. It's a solution that would cost almost nothing for the taxpayer. So I introduced the bill on May 27th, but the government didn't call it for debate. In fact, the government doesn't have to call my bill at all, but they can bring in their own, and I would welcome that. So come on, Mr. Premier, you have the ability to make more homes available across BC by certifying that former grow-ups have been completely remediated. How about it? Let's see some action on behalf of buyers and sellers across BC. 
Four current and former members of the Chilliwack Chiefs were selected in the 2019 NHL entry draft last weekend in Vancouver. In the fifth round, Cooper Moore was taken by the Detroit Red Wings. And as expected, Harrison Blaisdell selected by the Winnipeg Jets. In round six, Nikita Nestorenko went to the Minnesota Wild and Kevin Wall to the Carolina Hurricanes. All four players are committed to play American college hockey next season. It was 1998 all over again at the Women's World Cup in France. On Monday, after Canada's loss to Sweden, fans criticized the team's decision to not have Christine Sinclair shoot the second half penalty kick and compared the move to Wayne Gretzky's shootout snub during the 1998 Winter Olympics. Apparently, head coach Kenneth Heiner Mueller was not the one who made that call. It was Sinclair. But fans are still howling in disgust over the decision. Nothing is easy for the first-year Fraser Valley Bandits basketball team. Last Saturday, the Canadian Elite Basketball Squad lost its ninth straight game, this time to Edmonton. The Bandits remain the only winless team in the CEBL. And the playoff chances for the team in the first year? Well, they're fading fast with just 11 games remaining in the schedule. The Bandits are now 0-9, and their next home game is July the 4th, when they host the Guelph Nighthawks at Abbotsford Centre. Congrats to UFV baseball coaches Jordan Leonardton and Wes Darville on being selected to Canada men's baseball team for the 2019 Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. They run from July 26th to August 11th. Next, our real estate report with Scott McVetty of Remax NIDA Realty. Scott? Thanks, Don. This week on the real estate report, we're going to focus on the last 90 days. As always, we're looking specifically at Chilliwack neighborhoods and Chilliwack stats. And as promised, our uber-focused section will be on Garrison Crossing. But first, let's take a look at the entire Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board. From Vetter to Hope, from Yarrow to Harrison, that's all part of CADREB. And if we look at my market health meter, currently board-wide, we're in a balanced market. I always relate this metric to elementary school economics because it's simply a relationship between supply and demand. When houses sell quickly and there's less than a five-month inventory, then we're in a seller's market. We experienced a perpetual seller's market from 2015 until late last year. A buyer's market means a greater supply. In real estate terms, that's an inventory of over 7.2 months. Overall, we were briefly in a buyer's market this January, and January is traditionally the slowest month here for reported sales. As a buyer or a seller, a balanced market may not be exciting, but if you need to sell, there's probably a buyer out there for you, provided you're priced well. And if you're a buyer, you probably have a few perfect homes to choose from, so you can be a little more aggressive with your offers and a little more picky. As I said last week, I expect this will be the new normal for the next year or so, with brief climbs into a seller's market during the peak months and dips into a buyer's market during the slower winter months. So let's do this week's Uber Focused. As promised, we're going to zoom right into a different neighborhood each week, and this week it's the Sardis neighborhood of Garrison Crossing. Many long-term locals will remember this area as the old base, or CFB Chilliwack, that was decommissioned in 1997. Since then, it has become a community that is a broad mix of living options, with a, all within a short walk of the shops and restaurants of Garrison Village. In the last 90 days, in Garrison Crossing, there have been four single-family homes sold for an average sale price of just over $707,000. Four condos have sold for an average sale price of $334,000, and a whopping 16 townhomes sold for an average of just under $466,000. When we talk about market health, Sardis is actually out of a balanced market and currently sitting in a seller's market, and Garrison Crossing is a big part of that trend. With Garrison Central and Elam Village being built, many residents are wondering what impact there will be. Perhaps the greatest concern for Garrison residents is parking. Either way, it's been about 15 years since they first broke ground and they're almost finished its construction. From an investment standpoint, Garrison falls into what I like to call blue chip real estate because people will always want to move there, so values should always remain high in relation to other areas anyway. If you want an Uber focus done on your neighborhood, send a message to news at chilltv.ca. Until then, I'm Scott McVetty with Remax Nida Realty, and after the break, our travel report with Deborah Green of Maritime Travel.
vegetables are great, but there's 80 kinds of different candy. Travel, a favorite topic of dinner parties, coffee dates, office water cooler conversations, and family gatherings. My name is Deborah Green, and I've had the pleasure of assisting in making travel dreams come true for my clients for the past 25 years and counting. Everyone should have a bucket list of travel destinations they would like to experience. My list started when I was 19 years old and boarded my first aircraft, and I've had the opportunity to tick many items off that list. A few of my most memorable moments have been tenting on the Okavanga Delta in Africa, where I could hear the lions roaring at night, diving on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, wandering through the magnificent Schoburn Palace in Vienna, Austria, and entering the gates of Disneyland with my son and watching the wonder in his eyes. My next big adventure is coming this October, where I'll be sailing the wonderful Rhine River from Basel to Amsterdam. Over the years, I have learned that there are two main objectives clients want to achieve when booking travel. One is what I call a fly and flop holiday. The objective of this holiday is to relax and rejuvenate. A perfect beach with great weather, great food, and superb service will help to achieve this objective. For a great beach holiday, I always look for certain inclusions at a resort. I love to have unlimited a la carte dining for both lunch and dinner with no reservations required. I want service and a resort that offers pool and beach waiter staff. It's a must. 24-hour room service is always a bonus for those lazy mornings or late night cravings. With so many destinations and resorts to choose from, it can be daunting. This is where an expert travel consultant becomes so valuable in helping pick the best choice for you. The second travel objective is discovery travel. This is where you want to get out and experience a destination. There are many options in this category. You can be cruising, touring, independently traveling, or adventure traveling. One of the most popular methods of traveling these days is river cruising. You have five-star luxury accommodation and food while sailing into the heart of your destination. Wake up in the morning docked right along a small medieval town in Europe or rural village in Asia. River cruising is all-inclusive travel where you'll have your accommodations, transportation, outstanding meals, beer and wine with lunch and dinner, and tours in every stop included. Over the course of my appearance on Chill TV, I hope to introduce you to some fabulous destinations. This week, I have three great travel deals. If you've never been to Alaska, you should. The seven-night inside passage round trip out of Vancouver is an amazing experience. I have a Holland America sailing on the beautiful New Amsterdam, July 27th for seven nights in an ocean view cabin. Just $989.50 Canadian per person, including all your taxes. Looking ahead to the wet and rainy fall, why not a plan to escape with some sun and sand? October 15th for seven nights in the Mayan Riviera, Mexico at the amazing now Jade Riviera Cancun, $14.65 Canadian per person. This includes your round-trip airfare, seven nights, five-star, all-inclusive accommodation, and round-trip airport transfers. If you want something a bit further abroad, how about this one? October 31st for 14 nights with Viking River Cruise. Sail from Budapest to Amsterdam in a standard cabin, just 5,999 Canadian per person, and that includes your airfare from Vancouver. If you would like any more information on any of these great deals or any other travel options, feel free to call or send an email, 604-746-4041 or dgreen at maritimetravel.ca. Thanks for your first travel report, Deborah, and some of those great deals. And now please welcome Lori Clausen to the show with her commentary on social media marketing in the Fraser Valley. Well, hey, friends of Chilliwack, I'm here to talk to you today about Instagram and Instagram marketing. With over 1 billion users on Instagram and growing, Instagram's set of comprehensive and fun tools make getting discovered easier than ever. So, fun fact, did you know that hashtag Chilliwack has over 320,000 posts. You heard me right, that's 320 potential eyeballs on your content if you use just that one hashtag. Using appropriate and well-researched hashtags gets people found every single day. I myself have been found and actually signed clients just because of hashtags. There is definitely a science to it. Here's another fun fact for you. Around 64% of 
overall of Instagram users are between the ages of 16 and 34. So if this in any way is your target market, why aren't you on Instagram? Here's a freebie marketing tip for you, something to think about. If this 16 to 33 to 34 year old crowd isn't your target market, but their parents are, why not market through this younger set to reach your older ideal set? When you stop and think about it, the possibilities are endless. I recommend that you use the tools that Instagram provides for free, let me add. There's the feed, there's Instagram stories, IGTV, and of course the direct messages or what most people call DMs. That's your ultimate goal in terms of transactions and building your business. Used with proper intentions and a great strategy, so much is possible with Instagram marketing. Now, let me just elaborate a little bit when I talk about the tools of Instagram. I'm speaking most specifically of Instagram stories. They have hashtags available, they have location tags available, they have mention tags available, not to mention stickers and gifts that make it so much fun. The evolution of social media marketing will only continue to grow, so start now. Do your research, establish your goals, play and have fun. It's not too late to benefit from Instagram marketing. Thank you so much, Lori, for enlightening us to the power of Instagram. Chill TV weather. It is a typical June. We've had unstable conditions for the past week, and now the summer switch has been turned on. Mainly summer, uh, sunny as we go into Canada Day and into July with temperatures around 25 degrees. Thanks for watching Chill TV's News of the Week, and thanks especially to our guest this week, Nancy Guitar, our, uh, our guest anchor, MLA Chilliwack Kent Lori Thronis. Scott McVetty of Remax NIDA Realty, uh, returning to Chill TV for his real estate report. Deborah Green from Maritime Travel and her Chill TV travel report. And of course, Lori Clausen of Clausen Marketing Co. And Nancy, again, thanks for being on the show. Uh, so what are you up to now? Well, I'm a volunteer with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. I do improv here in Chilliwack with the Symphony Improv team. I uh, cook really great ribs, and I host a talk show called Small Talk, which is aired on Chill TV. You can find us every Monday at 3 o'clock, and the next season starts July 8th. Great. Nancy, thanks for watch. Thanks for being with us, and thank you for watching. Now, next week's uh, scheduled guests include former Chilliwack Mayor and MLA John Less and Janet Reeves as our guest anchor, as well, Scott McVetty from Remax NIDA Realty and his real estate report. Now, if you would like to share the spotlight, even if you've never been on camera before, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca with your CV, and if you have it, links to your video. And if there's something in Chilliwack in the Eastern Fraser Valley you feel we should be reporting on, again, send us an email to the same address, news at chilltv.ca. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane. Mm -hmm.